Good morning, good morning, good morning. If you are new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. Please make sure that you subscribe to this channel if this video is something that you felt connected to. Um, I do a multitude of conversations uh, on this channel. I'm just not as consistent as I need to be, but we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. But if you are someone who has returned to my channel, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your comments and your messages and your uplifting words. It means the world to me. Now, if you have noticed other videos that um, I previously had up concerning where I was and all that kind of stuff, um, I have not deleted them, but they are currently made unavailable. Um, because certain things that you share when you're in the midst of, you know, dealing with spiritual warfare, if you start sharing too many things, then you open the door for attacks. So, um, right now that is on hold until God gives me permission to reactivate or make them public again. But today, I mean, I wanted to come and discuss a few things because I really feel like there's so many things right now that's going on in this world. It's like, how can you have a YouTube channel and not share, not communicate about some things? And um, definitely as a woman of faith, I can't go without conversating about the coronavirus and, you know, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit speaks through me because I do have a habit, not gonna lie, I do have a habit of um, sharing things or sharing the, you know, my perspective on things in a very stern way. That's just my personality. That is just, you know, how I communicate sometimes, but it's from love. So my main concern or my main deal is that I want to make sure that I am able to communicate and reach, you know, more people and that it's not offensive to anyone. So I did this video already and I was like, mm, let me scale back a little bit. This is a bit much, but you know, hey, uh, so I'm just going to do it again. But um, as far as the coronavirus, um, I just would like to send a message out to my followers to um, be in prayer, communicate and allow your source of uh, concern to come from the Holy Spirit and to come from prayer. Because when it's coming from the Holy Spirit, then, you know, God will give you exactly what you need as far as the level of concern that you should have and what you should and should not do uh, in order to protect yourself and your family because a lot of things that are happening today are very biblical um, I don't know how often you guys stay on YouTube but I have family that stays on YouTube and finds all of the cases of different things that are happening worldwide um, like the the uh, epidemic or the issue of the locusts in Africa. You know, for those of you who did not know, um, Africa, literally, and I think it's Kenya, had so many swarms of locusts that it was threatening hunger for them. And when I say swarms, I mean swarms the size of um, New York, New York City, three times the size of New York City. That's how much land in Africa that it's covering. That's huge. Swarms of locusts that are eating their crops and threatening hunger for them. Um, then on other cases, there are, you know, these swarms of bats that are attacking, um, actually biting and scratching people. Um, they're so loud when they hover over the, you know, the town and they're pooping everywhere, so the whole the whole town is um, smells bad, and it's so many of them that literally they're heavy enough for the tree branches to break, like trees are breaking because 
it's covered with thousands and thousands of bats. Um, in other news, there are situations that are happening like um, the ground is breaking open and there are rivers of blood. So all over the world, there are all of these things that are going on, including, you know, floods and tornadoes and rumors of war and it's everything that's going on is is it's written it's biblical and i know we've been saying for years our grandparents have been saying for years it's the end times it's the end times but it was nothing like this nothing um very very obvious signs that we're in the end days and here we are with you know a plague um like the corona coronavirus you know a worldwide epidemic type situation and um the main thing that we cannot do is i'm sorry i was like what is that um the the main thing we cannot do is exercise fear as as people and believers do not exercise fear do not allow fear to get into your spirit um and be concerned about yourself and your children just be cautious, be prayerful. And um, that's pretty much the only thing that we can do is be prayerful because when we are prayerful, when we are doing everything that we're supposed to do um, and we're listening to the Holy Spirit, then we'll be safe because the Holy Spirit speaks to us. If it's, if it's something that we wanna do and we're like, you know what? I spent my money on this flight and I'm going on this vacation and God or the Holy Spirit is telling you, no ma'am, you need to stay home, but you decide to not listen to the Holy Spirit, then at that very moment is when you are putting your life at risk and you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to cover you. That is the important part of having a relationship and knowing when and when not to do certain things so that you are covered. Um, so, you know, that's all I have to say, you know, about the, the virus and everything like that. It's just be, be in prayer and be cautious and listen to the Holy Spirit. Um, don't allow the decisions that you make to come from the media, because I do know that the media is not sharing everything that they know is going on. Um, I've had people who are in the healthcare industry in Atlanta tell me, you know, from the inside that they knew about the first person that contacted the coronavirus in Atlanta and they did not report it until like three weeks later. So, you know, now it's getting to the point where they don't have a choice but to report certain things, but everything is not being reported it's not so just be safe and um that's all i have to say about that secondly i wanted to share um the well, i wanted to talk very very quickly um five minutes give me five minutes about the jamal bryant situation pastor i'm sorry pastor jamal bryant and he is i commend him you know I used to have some little concerns about him for some reason. I felt like he was maybe a pastor that just wanted to be, you know, talked about or be in the limelight or whatever the case may be. But now after him talking about um, the sage situation, I just feel a little different about him. And I say that because there's so many other, you know, um, pastors, ministers, reverends, or anyone who is you know, in ministry that are not sharing very vital things with the body of Christ. And um, one, and, and they don't recognize because they don't know enough about it. <coughs> Excuse me. They don't recognize that it is very important for people to be sharing what is a part of God's kingdom and what's not. Because it starts with one thing that you know Christians might start tapping into and touching and then the enemy starts feeding other things into their spirit that leads them further and further away from 
uh, from God and from their faith and their beliefs. And then before you know it, they're like, oh, I'm not Christian. I'm just spiritual. Um, you know, yeah, I don't believe that God is just going to put us in a box and yeah, yeah, yeah. And then before you know it, you're a full blown new ager. Um, as a body of Christ, it is very important that ministers and people who are in charge of educating and um, directing um, other people within the church that they are aware of the tactics that the enemy is using in this day and time to attack the church and to win over souls. It is no different from me being a makeup artist or a photographer. And if I am not keeping myself abreast of the different um, trends and styles of makeup and photography or whatever it is that needs to be learned, then I'm doing myself a disservice because everybody else is leaving me behind and I have no clue what's going on. It is no different in the church. In order for you to be able to, to keep people educated and informed on exactly what is a part of God's kingdom and what isn't. As leaders, they need to be educated on exactly what people are actually leaning towards. It is very popular right now for people to go and buy sage. Like the numbers in purchases of sage have skyrocketed and so has the numbers in purchasing crystals that being said it is very 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 important that once leaders start seeing this and start recognizing this you need to go and do your research about it it says throughout the bible different things about idolatry about sorcery, divination, the occult. But yet you will be surprised how many people within the church and even leaders and pastors that really don't know enough about that part of what falls under those practices that people are doing. It's not just psychics. It's not just um, tarot cards. It's not just astrology. There are so many different practices that people that are even, um, you know, pulling different practices from their ancestors that fall very widely under idolatry. Um, and right now it's very popular for Christians to think it's okay to use sage. And so if you did not read or not read, but if you did not see exactly what went on with Pastor Jamal Bryant, there are a lot of people that are attacking him, um, trying to make uh, excuses for their reasons of using or being able to use sage when they have not done their own research on why sage is considered witchcraft. Not only are they attacking him so that they can, you know, fulfill their own fleshly desires to you, Sage, but they are bringing up his sin. And someone else used a very, very great analogy. He said, if I go cheat on my, on my wife, and then I come and tell you that I saw an, uh, you know, a, an ax murderer sneak through your door into your apartment, are you now not going to trust his knowledge or something that he now is aware of just because he committed adultery. It just does not <laughs> make any sense at all for someone to bring up this man's sin and talk about him being an adulterer. And because he has sinned that he can't tell you anything else 
We all have sin. We all have sin. And if you are a Christian and you are persecuting this man for his sin and completely disregarding the fact that he's bringing to the table without going and doing your own research, you are not only you know, giving the right for God to now judge you because if you've ever committed adultery or if even if you aren't committing adultery, if you are fornicating, if you are, you know, if you are dealing with anger and resentment and all these other sins that a lot of us carry, then you are offering up the opportunity for God to judge you just the same. So let's leave judging someone in their past off the table and pay attention to the facts at hand which is paying attention and being careful about what you bring into your household. I've already done a video on what the Bible says about sage. Do your research on it. Sage is most definitely related to witchcraft. Sage is definitely something that is used in rituals. And when I was doing occult practices before becoming reborn again and, um, and delivered, Everyone that I knew that practiced the occult and sorcery and divination used sage. There is a reason why sage is purchased in places that sell candles for spell work, that sell tarot cards, that sell crystals, that sell pendulums. Everything in relation to demonic interaction divination, occult, all of those things. Sage is right there in the middle. Why would you want to buy something like that that you know is even tied to those practices and those histories of being used for demonic purposes? So I just want to send a message out to the body of Christ that if you are considering yourself to be a Christian, if someone brings any information to you that you are unaware of before speaking about it, before fighting about it, before trying to defend yourself about it, go and do your research. And then if you are, for whatever reason, now made aware that it's, that it's witchcraft and you still make a personal choice, even though in the Bible it does talk about things that fall under the line of adultery and you still choose to do it, then that means you're okay with uh, the judgment that God will provide to you for continuing to, to do it. Because that is one thing I can definitely tell you that God hates. Um, and he will allow those doors that sage and all of those things open to the demonic world to open right on up in your home. And then you'll be calling on Jesus, trying to get them out. So just be very mindful of what you tap into, what you bring into your home, around your family, and around your children. Because there are a lot of things that are related to the spiritual world on the side you don't want anything to do with. And I know by personal experience, you do not want to be able to have very very known um, spiritual activity going on in your home the minute you start burning sage all right guys so i have been on here for almost 20 minutes i thank you so much if you have watched to the end and if this is any information that you feel that needs to be shared with someone that you know please feel free to share this message and share this video please thumbs it up and i would love 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 to communicate with you via um, comments so please leave a comment um, on what your thoughts are in reference to the whole coronavirus situation or what your thoughts are in reference to the Jamal Bryant situation and um, yeah any comments that are disrespectful and um, that are not a um, <laughs> any comments that are not respectful and intelligent 
debate type of conversations, then it will be deleted. All right. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching and love you and stay blessed. See you next time.